Hey guys, this video is on installing Valet, which is a nice tool to have, um, very similar to something like MAMP or XAMPP if you're coming from that GUI uh, PHP local dev environment kind of flow. So why would you use Valet? Um, more or less the extendability of it. So you can do things like use your own domain based on whatever you provide. You can have a entire directory of sites that are just automatically served as opposed to launching a single instance of one with MAMP um, or something like that on a Mac. And all in all, it's just a little bit um, more powerful in my opinion. I don't know that it's easier to use or install. I've ran into a bunch of errors getting it up and running and making sure it's updated with the latest version of PHP and MySQL and all that stuff, which you need to install on your own, which is kind of a burden. But I think if you're a WordPress developer or a Laravel, any, anything to do with PHP, you will probably want to gravitate towards a tool like this as you progress in your career or just in your freelance side stuff or whatever you would do. Uh, reason being is you can do things like install uh, SSL certificates locally that just make that with a couple of uh, scripts you can set that up as opposed to doing it manually which is a pain. Um, things like that where you have to think about how you can like uh, interact with something as close as possible to your production environment with your local environment. This video is to install Valet so what we'll do you need a few things. Um, I'm using a Mac and I'm pretty sure that's a requirement. So you'll need to use Homebrew, which if you don't already have it installed, you can check and see if you have it. In my terminal here, I'll just do a brew version. I do have it installed. I'll just do for clarity's sake. And if you are on an outdated version compared to me, or it's just not up to date, you might just do a brew update before you do anything at this point. That might take some time to update your system, but it's very worth it to do so. Uh, and then on top of that, you need to install PHP itself, which is something you don't normally need to do with MAMP uh, because that comes with it. So you just literally, it, in terms of easiness, that is the way to go if you're looking for just a quick opt, opt entry. The reason I don't really like it is the, the weight of the, the app itself. Uh, Valet seems a little faster as well, so I, I could be wrong there, but to each his own. So with that, you would install brew install PHP at the time is 7.2. I have this installed, so it's going to tell me that. But if you don't, it will go through these commands. Um, you will need to set a... Um, path in your patch profile or .zh zshrc I cannot say that um, so bear with me if I butcher it multiple times so uh, not necessarily for PHP but for Composer which we'll get into next as well as my SQL if you want to install uh, local database setup too which is something you have to think about with this too it doesn't come with that my PHP admin interface so it's it's stuff you have to roll yourself but once you do it's well worth the, the setup time so uh, if you've installed PHP at this point you'll want to install composer um, it doesn't say so in the guide over here to install composer uh, but essentially you can go to the composer website like composer PHP you should see get composer and you can use their guide to install it I kind of found that I installed it with brew homebrew and it worked for me so up to you how you want to do it um, but once you have it installed you can run composer and you're probably gonna error because it's not in your path yet so that's where I mean in this screen if it's your bash profile, it might look like this. This is my CSHRC file. And you need to do an export of your path with this path. So I have here the path equals dollar sign path colon dollar sign home dot composer vendor bin. So this is where all of our composer uh, plugins will be. And that's how we can access anything 
to do with composer as well. So if I just type composer in my terminal, I get all these commands now. So I'm doing this with the expectation that um, maybe you've had familiarity with this stuff before. If not, this is probably not a beginner tutorial, but it's more or less uh, something to get you up and running or to at least reference. So hopefully this is helpful. If you have questions, definitely reach out. So with Composer, you can do a ton. Um, we just basically need it to go and fetch our valet package, which we want. So that would be part of the next step. And doing so, you make sure that that is your, in your path, like we just saw. And then you'd run a command called Composer Global Require Laravel Valet, which is part of Laravel. And I already have it as well. And I'll just say nothing to install or update for me, but for you it will update and install some things. So at that point, you should be able to get the valet instance. Maybe you might have to uh, close your terminal and maybe or create a new tab and do this. Um, but if so, you might get some password prompts uh, to verify that. So the valet commands themselves have their own options, which are very uh, extendable and stuff like that. So here we have version 2.012. At this, this time, you have all these available commands, which include your domain, um, installing Laravel, all the links you might have set up, which are going to be essentially your sites that you're serving locally. Um, you can park a given folder full of sites to tell Laravel to serve each of those as opposed to doing one by one, which gets cumbersome. And then you could do all these things like secure, which allows you to um, install HTTPS setup locally, which is cool. You can as assign some security certificates, which is nice to test between a local and a uh, development in or local and production environment. So that's really useful. And then you can also, of course, uninstall Laravel, um, unsecure it, which version of drivers you have, all these things. So uh, the main thing we want to focus on with it installed is just making sure we can access our actual test app. So no matter what, we can say valet, I'm going to double check this is right, valet domain. So valet domain will tell me what domain we have currently. And since I've run this locally before, I changed the default from test to app. And maybe I'll change it back to test. So valet domain test. And it'll restart a bunch of stuff and then come back and tell me, hopefully, that it updated that domain to test. So that essentially says we can ping any site at a dot test and it should come back for us as opposed to say with man for zamp typing localhost 8888 so what we'll do is ping foobar.test and see what happens we'll get pings back yeah so it's working cool so a real use case of this is to say install wordpress and that's what i typically use it for because mamp was just bloated for me and i wanted to use something a little more extendable so what i ended up doing is installing MySQL on my own and you can install that with brew here just like it normally would using homebrew so I've again already installed this run this on your own system it should tell you or go ahead and do all those querying things that you need to do and install things you will need to add this to your path as well so it's a little bit different than the composer one so we've got our path colon user local mysql bin so that, all, that allow, essentially allows us to run mysql from the command line if we need to so yours might vary depending on your system so up to you on how you want to configure that uh, with that installed though you just want to make sure your services are started with brew so you can run brew services start mysql so i went ahead and re reinstalled it just for fun and uh, you do need to specify 
the MySQL version you installed when you run brew services start, which I just, just mentioned. So definitely make sure you do that when you install this. So that allows you to do, the, do that in the background. And each time you log in, MySQL will start up until you say stop in this call. So I'll just go ahead and do that. I think mine has already started, yeah. So you can restart if you want to as well. So that allows us to access the database for WordPress, which we'll need which I like to use a tool called SQL Pro and you can go download this for free it's a um, very cool tool that allows you to just basically visualize your database as opposed to doing it all from the command line which can get tedious so I would recommend just going and downloading this and then we can add a new database at this point and name it whatever you want um, basically it would be what would be something relevant to the site you're going to create. So once you are greeted with this after you've installed it, go ahead and enter the host, which will end up being 127.0.0.1. Your username for valet is going to be root by default, and then your password will be empty. So that's just something to remember. It is in the documentation if you want to just double check that. With this app, I tend to just set a favorite, and it just lets it it adds it to the left here you can just quick connect and be on your way so what I'll do is enter that there's our databases nothing's there yet besides this one quick one I did um, but what we can do is create one at this point so I'll do a um, WordPress test something like that this is a terrible name but I'll create that and what we can do then is go get WordPress and install it. So I'm going to download WordPress directly because that is the glorified way to do it. So just go ahead and download it. Wow, that view is kind of gnarly. I'll get the 4.89 or 4.98 version. Grab it from my downloads folder real quick. Cool. So I'll copy this over to my new site I created that is the WordPress test. And I'll open this just by hitting open and then period. It should open in your finder. And I'll paste in those files with command V. And we need to configure our site. If you never installed WordPress, this is probably a little over your head. Um, but if not, then good for you. So let's configure this add our database. So we just created that database in our SQL app, Pro app. It's called WordPress test. You notice there's nothing in here yet because nothing's been added. So we can do that by going to WordPress test in our database name. We're adding WordPress test. And then our username, remember, was root. And then finally, our password is actually an empty string. So we'll set that, save it. I can close that file and that one too really and at that point we can go and the in, in valet your site is going to be relative to your folder name so when you do um, use your sites as valet would put it um, just use your folder name as the basically the path to the domain of your blog or whatever it is you're installing so what you need to do first though is go to your sites directory uh, I'll just cd back out either your sites directory or the site you're in the single site and we need to do valet park on this and that tells valet that this is the sites you want to serve with valet and it just remembers that going forward so that's awesome in my opinion so then we can go into our wordpress test now we're in that directory and notice when I go to WordPress underscore test dot app, I believe. All right, and I think it changed it back to test. We're greeted with WordPress. So now we can install it uh, any which way we want. I'll just, I gotta use something I remember. Cool. I don't, I'm not going to use this site, but it's just showing you 
I'm just showing you what you can do with this. So just the lever was my user. Um, and as you can see, we agreed it with the new WP admin. Um, Gutenberg's new. I need to kind of check that out, maybe do some tutorials there. Uh, it looks pretty cool aside from that. Uh, but that's essentially it. So you see that your your site lives based on your folder name and then the site domain you've provided. Uh, say you wanted to change that, you can do Laravel, or not Laravel, Valet uh, domain. And say I'll use app again. This The third word there is what you want it to be. So this sets it and you'll see it restart. And once it restarts, we still need to do one more thing, and that is edit our site URL in our database. So if you go over to the SQL Pro app, refresh this, and you'll see data or WordPress has been installed now. We can go into WP Options, Content, and you'll see two, the very first options are gonna be what we need to edit. Since we updated it to be app, we'll need that to reflect here. So you can double click those add app as the extension. I'll do the same for this one. And that should, once we change it here, it's going to do some gnarliness with the, um, I think app is like a defined HTTPS secure server, so we need to actually make this secure. So again, Valet is cool with that, and it says if you do that, you can say valet secure and it will install a security certificate on your site locally it re restarts everything every time so it flushes caches and whatnot so hopefully with this done we can go back and reload the site with a secure server you'll see it has been installed on this instance so my hope is i'll just refresh and that didn't work, but maybe we can go to .app. I might need to clear my cookies. And I don't know, it might be a Firefox thing too, so let me see if it works in Chrome. I've had this bug before, it's kind of annoying. Yeah, so in Chrome it works, um, but we'd have to just kind of pick and choose with Firefox if you want to use it. You can add an exception there. So you'll notice it's completely secure, which is great. And then you can still log in to the admin. And I have to type things right. And that's secure too. So the whole thing's installed. We did it locally with Valet. Uh, it did take some setup with the PHP, MySQL, editing your paths. Um, it is a little advanced, so I'd recommend if you run into issues, definitely Google those. I'll do my best to help you if you have comments to add to the video. Um, otherwise, hopefully this helped you guys expand your WordPress workflow. Um, the reason I'm doing this is I, I want to do some more uh, tutorials coming up, maybe around Gutenberg and how to essentially the old school way to migrate data locally or to a production site or from a production site and then the new school way which i really recommend uh, is using a plugin called um, wp migrate pro which is a f one of the default installs for me so hopefully it's helped uh, if you have ideas for future videos or want to see something let me know thanks for watching and i appreciate the support Bye.